Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. And this recording is a request from Rachel, who uh, so she sent me a message yesterday and asked me if I would make a recording uh, for anxiety whilst in bed, you know, uh, trying to get to sleep. But fear of sleeping, fear of falling asleep. Now, I actually have a a little bit of knowledge of this personal knowledge that's come from having sleep apnea. So it's something I needed to overcome. Not the sleep apnea, because that's just one of those things, you know, but the fear of stopping breathing when I'm asleep and regardless if if I'm scared or not, it's going to happen because I have sleep apnea. It's, I can hook myself up to one of those machines which I've got I could have an operation, uh, which I'm looking, I'm thinking of, I'm quite interested in that, because the, the, I don't know what it is, there's a bit of flap, there's a flap, <laughs> it's a weird word, I don't know why it's funny, but there's a flap, a bit of flappy skin that actually closes when someone's asleep, or if they're kind of, their neck isn't straight, uh, so someone's got sleep apnea sometimes that flap's a little bit bigger the flap that closes and opens when we breathe uh, so that's part of the reason why I stopped breathing so I know it's not about me but generally everything else most things are about me really I guess <laughs> Mr Ego Man so there was a time when I have been actually petrified of going to sleep or going to bed and I you know I stayed up for you know because falling asleep is something that I find very very easy too easy in fact it's getting to the stage recently where whenever I make a recording, I seem to fall asleep doing the recording. Now, I don't have, uh, I forget the name of it, you know, the condition where you just fall asleep randomly. I don't have that. So I don't fall asleep during conversations or uh, when I'm watching a movie or if I'm, you know, roller skating but when I close my eyes and start to talk slowly I do quite often start to drift and part of that I guess is because I do what I'm talking about so if I'm doing a sleep recording, then I end up getting into that zone of falling asleep. But it's a little bit pro- problematic for me when I'm trying to talk at the same time. So I mean, this recording is it's about sleep and it's about anxiety this particular recording so 
Um, I'm not sure. I might have music, what in one in the background in the music, one you know another version. So this with me just talking, another one with background music. I'm not sure. I'll decide later. So you could use this recording to fall asleep or you can reuse this recording in a sense of listening and allowing allowing yourself to open your mind up to new learnings to new possibilities to new ideas in fact, they might not be new ideas at all, but you may hear them differently. You may start to realize that actually something's changed. So this recorded is you know, it's it's being made for Rachel. You know, as it's, it's, it was her request. But I think it could be useful for other people as well, because I'm going to be focusing on sleeping, and I'm going to be focusing on reducing anxiety. Because, in a way. If we're lying in bed and we are scared of anything, that is very likely to get in the way. I mean, I can see how it couldn't get in the way of the process of relaxing and your mind slowing down and drifting into a peaceful sleep and of course there's that relaxation process because without relaxation sleep generally doesn't happen I say generally but there's those times when I've done it and I'm sure you have as well where you've been so exhausted that you've laid down on your bed and the next thing you know your alarm's going off and it's 7 o'clock in the morning or you know you you, or you wake up and it's uh, the morning time and you don't remember anything you just literally as if it's just happened instantly I do believe sleeping is, it is time traveling. We do, we skip through time so quickly. Time doesn't exist when we're asleep. To us, it, you know, we might not time travel, but we definitely time distort when we're asleep. I'm sure I've gone through years when I've been asleep. I've gone through whole massive things that's happened and I've only been asleep for maybe an hour. So it's a big time distortion. So feeling relaxed is important for you to fall asleep being scared being fearful of something whatever it may be you know gets in the way of feeling relaxed but then I guess it depends on what it is that the fear is for because just being scared generally uh, about something, uh, it's a phobia or someone that's scared of flying. 
unless the person has a flight coming up, then being scared of flying is no, is there's nothing to do with going to sleep. It wouldn't even, there's no connection. Unless you was to sort of write down a list and go through them <laughs> as you're lying in bed. Uh, what am I scared of? I'm scared of snakes and I'm scared of uh, jumping out of planes and parachuting and uh, I'm scared. And then just imagining those things, then yeah, you're probably not gonna uh, get to sleep very well. And that might seem like a ridiculous thing to do. But actually, if you're scared of falling asleep, then that's what you're doing in a way. Because you're, you're focusing on the fear. And there's no judgments here for doing that. I've spent enough of my life focusing on fear. Wasted, in fact wasted a lot of my life on fear some justified some I must say not especially as an adult when you start thinking about wasting your time wasting your energy on something like fear wasting your time and unless you're a vampire and you're going to live for hundreds and thousands of years why are you wasting your time time is precious Time is the most precious thing that we have. It's all we have really is time. We don't know how much time generally. It's precious. So sometimes, you know, we could go into down the road of, uh, I could swing a watch in your in your vision say you are no longer going to feel uh, scared of anything well no that's silly as well it's something you should be scared of if you see a lion running towards you that's escaped from the zoo you should be scared it might not do you any favours but it's natural to be scared you know, I know some people say, show no fear in the lion, the lion won't attack you. Well, I don't know how to just stand there without any fear of a lion walking towards me, licking his lips, holding a knife and fork. You know, I'm simple fact. So there are times when being scared is natural. Natural, it's natural, there's lots of things to be scared of. But how many things are in your bedroom with you? Is a question. No, look at it practically. You know? How many things are in your bed that you're scared of? And you know what? If you're in bed with something that you're scared of, then you need to address that situation very quickly and change that situation very quickly. So that's a, a conversation probably for another day. But if your fear of sleeping is because you're in bed with someone that you're scared of, then they need to be removed. 
from your life. There you go. Ooh, controversial, no. Not controversial at all. Because, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of intelligence really to come up with that, does it? You know, you know, and there probably are people perhaps listening to this that maybe have that are around someone that they're scared of that they fear and again I know what that feels like not an, not as an adult I'll be honest with you but as a child uh, I was in a domestic I didn't used to call it domestic uh, situations back then but domestic abuse violence and all anything you can imagine so I know what it feels like to be scared uh, petrified in fact to go to sleep to uh, because you don't know what's going to happen that kind of situation so if anybody listening to this is in a situation like that where their fear is because of another individual. Then changes are required. And there are places that you can get help. So seek help, please. Please, please, please. Seek help for that stuff. But, um, I don't think that, that's not the, the situation for, you know, Rachel when she called. I don't know what it is that she's fearful of but she gets anxiety when she goes to bed sometimes. Now, I used to find I'd get anxious about having, potentially having an anxiety attack. I'd say I spent, yeah, quite a large percentage of my day in the past worrying about having anxiety which caused anxiety so it's kind of an ironic kind of thing but called anxiety the anxiety was about having an anxiety attack so the more anxiety I had the more I thought about it the more I dreaded it, the more I tried to move away from it and hide almost, the more chance of a panic attack actually occurring, which was annoying, very annoying to say the least so let's say there's not uh, a disgusting despicable human being uh, sharing your bedroom let's say everything like that's fine okay you're either sleeping on your own or you're with a loving partner maybe they fart too much but you still love them you know Farting's natural. And if you judge someone else for farting, trust me, when you're asleep, you fart as well. <laughs> that might be, now everyone's going to be worried about going to sleep in case they fart. Everyone farts, it's fine. But the good thing about with women, and, and you, men as well, whoever's listening to this, your farts are silent and they smell of, they smell of happiness, so don't worry.
so in that situation what would you have to be fearful of and I know that when it comes to emotions logic and emotions don't generally fit together very well but I, I think my job is to communicate between the emotions and logic communicate communicate between emotions and reality what is the emotions can go on about what might be your emotion about what could happen and in those situations I think we've all got the ability to be a Stephen King I think we've all got a bit of Stephen King inside us you know that the ability to write a graphic horror film or book based on the emo you know the emotions and the imagination of like the worst possible scenario it's just imagination you know the, the thing about it is I think that we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we are actually capable of doing. For example, you don't have to be a victim to your thoughts. You don't have to. You don't have to allow your emotions to control you. You don't have to. So if you're allowing yourself to feel fearful and anxious when it comes to going to bed, you're allowing that and that's really annoying to hear I know trust me I know this what do you mean you're allowing it I'm not allowing it but the simple fact is you're allowing it because you're not using you you're letting your emotions control you because you know the best way to make changes, to really make changes, is to get in touch with those emotions and to use them for your benefit. And this is something that we have all done in the past. So we all know how to do it. And it usually happens when it's like the last straw. You know, you make a decision that you're never going to go back from. And it's almost like every bit of emotion is connected to that decision that you've made. Which means that there's nothing, no one can change it except you and you got so involved in it and you were so determined and it would take quite a lot of work to reverse it once you'd made that decision let me explain let me explain and this is what hypnosis works on as well, by the way. Because when you've got all your emotions behind a decision, behind an idea, when everything's working for you, 
changes happen. So yeah, changes happen because it's almost like all of your forces, all of your energy, your emotions, your focus, your mind, your 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 core, your whole it's like your entire energy is pinpointing, focusing like a laser beam on that particular decision that you're making. In this case, it would be the decision to eliminate that feeling of feeling afraid, of having anxiety, or of anything else. Your decision, laser beam focused decision that you're going to feel relaxed at night or whenever it is you decide to lay down and go to sleep. You're going to feel relaxed. You refuse, refuse. And this is, I'm getting, there's almost anger there as I'm saying it. And that's how you need to feel. You need to get in touch with your emotions. Where you refuse to have those feelings of anxiety. You refuse to feel fear when you're lying down on your bed. Which should be among the safest places on the planet for you to be. Especially if you're lucky enough to live in the Western world or you know a place where we live a generally safe life where we haven't got bombs being dropped on us like some countries do. So you can decide that your bed and your bedroom, in fact your entire home, but we're focusing on your bed and your bedroom and now have to be a safe space. Have to be. Not, I want it to be. I really do want it to be. And you know what? While we're at it, it doesn't matter what's come before. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, a way that you've acted before. So you may class yourself as a, a pacifist. You may class yourself as, some people class themselves as very weak. Uh, unable to defend or look after themselves or they're, you know, putting themselves down, that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter. That stuff is not relevant in this situation because right now you're the strongest person that's ever lived on this planet. Right now you can be who you want to be. You can be as strong as you choose. And when you're strong, when you feel strong, and you make a decision, well, first of all, when you say something, other people listen. And when you make a decision for yourself, you listen. Your unconscious mind, your conscious mind, your body, your muscles, everything, your body listens to what you're saying because of the vibrations. Because I realize you mean it. You mean it. This isn't wishy-washy. Oh, I wish I felt a little bit more relaxed at night. No, it's not going to give you anything. 
it can eventually. It, it's a very slow journey. And generally, I go down that journey myself. I do things very slowly. But other times, you need to move. You need to take action. You need to come to the point when you say, no more. That is enough. And we all have to do that sometimes. We all have to sometimes make those decisions that are very hard. But once you make them, you don't turn back. You never, never turn back. So it could be as simple as food poisoning. You go into a restaurant and maybe you get food poisoning. We've all probably had food poisoning at some point in life and it's not nice. But if you know where you caught it and you know you got it in a restaurant, nothing in the world is gonna drag you into that restaurant. You might take someone you don't like in there and just have some water and watch them eat the food, but generally you're not going to set foot inside that restaurant for no amount of money. Because you've got your emotions behind you. Your emotions connecting that decision together with super glue. So yeah, when you make a decision it sticks. And it's practically impossible to change it when it's that strong. Of course, everything can be changed if you choose. But when you've made a decision, for example, you know, with the food poisoning restaurant, practically impossible to move away from it to be able to set foot in there order some food and eat the food after knowing that you'd previously been poisoned by them let's face it yeah probably I can't imagine anything would get me to do that And that's, I think as they call it, a one trial learning, because we have the ability to learn very, very quickly, especially when it comes to unpleasant experiences. We're a bit flaky with nice experiences, but with unpleasant experiences, we can make a decision never to do something ever again based on that one trial learning, that one uh, possibly very disgusting experience, unpleasant, and you decide, in fact, you don't even decide never again, it automatically happens. And then you may say, I'm never going in there again, but that's because, or I'm never doing that again, because you've already automatically, emotionally made that decision. Just like if you've been listening to this, 
you have made that decision that you will not ever, ever, I do mean never, allow fear into your bedroom. Never allow fear into your bed. And never allow fear into that process of falling asleep. It's forbidden. It is, in fact, it's impossible to be there anymore. Because you've decided Let's let's look at it in a in a way. If someone put a cup of tea or coffee or drink that you like, and you're outside, and you know they're just basically serving it up. They turn away, and you see basically a seagull does a big poo and it lands in a cup, one of the cups, or one of the glasses of juice, whatever it is that's been served. And that person didn't know about it, they just handed you that glass or that cup to drink. Now, not everybody has the... Uh, ability to be as to be as unskillful as me but I would have, I'd start making a big deal about it and tell everyone about the in fact that would be the subject of the whole the whole meeting but others might keep quiet and say well thank you take the drink but not drink it not make a fuss not say anything because they didn't want anyone to be embarrassed or the only one should be embarrassed is the seagull for being so well, actually, it's quite a good aim, isn't it? In a sense. Maybe it's like their darts or snooker in the seagull world. Or football. Basketball. I don't know, you know. Something where you aim, basically. I'd make a fuss and I'd keep going on about it. And I'd probably still be talking about it now. Some people are a bit more classy than me. And they wouldn't mention it, but they'd take the cup or the glass of the juice, whatever's in it. Now, no matter how classy or how unclassy, no matter how fussy or how unfussy you are, I don't think there's a person... there's not one person I don't think that would drink that knowing the seagull had just dropped its guts into the drink and nothing could make you do it because as soon as you saw that happen as soon as you saw that big white, white and yellow, uh, so it's like a little omelet, <laughs> like almost like, in fact, it could be like a little uh, flying saucer decides to land, plop into the drink, into the cup or glass or mug or whatever it is holding it, and then you know. You've got a decision to make straight away. It's not whether or not you drink out of that because that is sorted instantly. You know you're not. But you also have the decision is, do you tell the person that it's happened? If they hand you the glass, then you don't necessarily need to tell them. But if they're about to hand that glass to someone else to drink, then if you've got a bit of, uh, 
humanity in you, then you would say something. And if you allow someone else to drink that, then you really need to have a little bit of a have a have a good talking to, give yourself a good talking to. But you would not drink that yourself, because it's disgusting, and. your mind goes into a different direction, doesn't it? It's almost like, it's almost like you go to a place, you go to a place where a part of your brain, I guess, part of your mind part of your unconscious mind perhaps an area where it's filled with things that you will not do things that are not acceptable to you and will never possibly never be acceptable now within that area, there may be things that are unacceptable to you and that might be getting in the way of your freedom and happiness. But that's a different story, you know? But they might be kind of hidden away in there. So we've got different areas where things are kind of clustered. And that area is the area where you would not drink seagull poo. And that's the area where you would not allow somebody to hurt you. Because once it's in that area, once that thought, the emotions, once that decision is made and it's in that area of your mind, There's no going back. It stays there. Unless you put a lot of work in to change it. Why would you want to? If something is harmful to you and you decide that it's no longer going to be acceptable behavior and you're not going to allow it anymore. That's now in that area of your mind. So it automatically kicks in so that you will not allow, for example, yourself to feel any kind of fear when you're in your own bed. This is your bed. This is a place where you not only should, but can and will, in fact, must feel safe you must feel safe and that's something that you need honestly you have to have that this is a must this is a no backing down from a no this is not flaky at all there's no options this is moved into that area of definite definite ideas, definite thoughts and decisions. You must, must feel safe in your own bed. You must feel safe in your own bedroom. In fact, you must feel safe. My voice is going as I talk. You must feel safe in your own home. I'll have some water. You must feel safe in your own bed. Must. It's not an option. It's not a, I wish I was. I wish I, f 
I wish I felt safer. I wish I didn't have... No. You must. That's it. That's the only way you can think about this. You must feel safe. You have to feel safe. And how do you do that? You refuse, refuse to even accept or acknowledge fear when you're in bed. There's no place for it. And if there's something causing it that's practically physically there, then that's something that needs addressing as soon as possible. Do not allow anybody, not one single person, to trigger that fear to have power over you. No one is worth being scared of. They're nothing. If someone gets off on bullying, and so a lot of people do, there's a lot of bullies out there. If someone gets off on bullying, you or anyone else, they're not even human anymore. They're nothing. They're that. They are literally exactly the same as the seagull poo that dropped into that cup or that you know, bowl or whatever it was. They are seagull poo. They're nothing. Might seem harsh, but they've got family, they've got friends that fine they're nothing to you doesn't matter about anybody else this is about you if other people are willing to put up with disgusting behavior from others that's up to them but you're not you're not them Never allow a bully to exist in your mind. Don't allow them that pleasure of affecting you, whether they're with you or whether they're, you know, someone at work or whether you haven't seen them for a while. You don't give them that energy. Your energy is being used on you to protect you, to give you a good life, to make the most of the time that you have on this planet. Because you've decided you don't want to waste time worrying about stuff. You don't, you're no longer, it's not even a case you don't want to. You refuse with every atom of your existence. Refuse to feel fear. Or to be scared. Especially when you're in your own home. Especially when you're in your own bed. There's nothing that you need to be scared of. Sleeping is the most natural thing in the world. And admittedly, we, we all have weird dreams. We do. Everybody does. And it's not something to be scared of either. It's natural. It's the most natural thing in the world. And don't bother reading books on interpreting the dreams you have that's just a waste of your time. It can be fun. It means nothing. Because dreams often mean nothing. Sometimes they do represent what you're taught, what you're thinking about, or what's going on in your life, of course. 
but it doesn't matter because when you're awake the dreams have gone dreams are there for a reason who knows what the reason is some would say it's just the brain being active when you're asleep I would say it's the brain being bored when you're asleep because we're so used to thinking about things so it's almost like you know if you've if you ever lived with someone and you're awake and they're not and you want them to be awake because you want to talk to them it's kind of like that <laughs> it is kind of like that where you'll be trying to be a bit noisier in the kitchen or banging stuff around or maybe coughing loudly wanting them to wake up I think that's what dreams are a little bit is it's the mind getting bored waiting for us to wake up so that they can play again because the mind likes to play it almost likes to play with us we're, we're our own best friend I know some people like to say oh I'm my own worst enemy shut up shut up saying stupid things like that from now on oh you're being a bit aggressive no it needs to be said we need to stop pussying around pussyfooting around ourselves now I think it's important to be kind to yourself be gentle but you know what sometimes you also need to be firm and be realistic say it how it is and if you're being negative towards yourself then by ignoring it you're doing yourself no favours and it's causing more harm. If you, When you catch yourself being negative, pull yourself up on it. I say, shut up. You're not saying it horribly. You can say it with a smile. But the simple fact is, because when you say that to yourself, those things to yourself, it's not you saying it. This is things that you've learned from other people. Maybe even from television, from the news, family members, partners, teachers from school, parents, brothers, sisters, books you've read, movies you've seen, all kinds of stuff like that. Everything affects us. Everything we see, everything we do, everything we hear has an effect. A very slight, very mild effect maybe. But we're all affected because that's how the human brain works. That's why we have advertising. Because advertisers, if there was no advertising there'd be no television as simple as that television would not have existed without adverts so we are affected by what we see by what we hear what we feel what we smell what we taste what we touch we're affected by those things so when you put all those emotions and feelings together and you decide that you're not going to allow negative, harmful, hurtful thoughts to come into your mind or to verbally say things. Now, if you find yourself saying, oh, I'm so stupid, or, uh, tell yourself off. Seriously, tell yourself off. Because the fact is you've caught yourself saying it. And you've probably said the same kind of things or worse thousands and thousands of times in your life without even noticing that you're doing it. So basically, if you said to me thousands and thousands of times 
that. Are you so fat you'll never get a girlfriend? Are you so fat you never? If you kiss, imagine someone saying that to you thousands of times. At the end of it, you're really going to believe. Well, I'm going to. I will obviously, I know that I'm. I've got a superb physique, and I'm a catch, so it wouldn't affect. <laughs> no, it would affect. We're affected by what we hear, especially. Uh, if someone says it that we care about it can be hurtful but you know what when we say it to ourselves that's when it really sinks in because there's no there's nothing to stop it most of the time we probably don't even notice it and it goes straight into your unconscious mind and your unconscious mind does not care whether something is real or not, whether it's right or wrong. If you tell your unconscious mind something, it takes it in, takes it on board and accepts it. Now if someone else says it to your unconscious mind, talks to you, your unconscious mind, you know, there's that thing called a critical faculty where your unconscious mind and your conscious mind is kind of mixed mixed together a little bit and you say, well, wait a minute, what do you say about me? No, I will not, I will not be scared when I'm in my own bed. I will not be scared when I'm in my own home or my bedroom. And nothing, nothing is going to change that now. Because from now on, I realise that I will never, never allow anything or anyone, including myself, I will never allow anything or anyone to affect me in that way where I feel fear in my own home. Especially my own bed, a place almost spiritual. It's, almost, it's a spiritual place. It's a place where you're at your most vulnerable. You're asleep, you're unconscious, you're dreaming, your body is healing. Your mind and brain is healing. You're processing things that maybe have happened during the day. Things maybe have happened in the past. It's almost, I don't like a, a night shift going on, you know, organizing things and putting things away. And, and it's all automatic. It just happens. And your body's healing. And your mind is healing. And you feel safe because you are safe and you refuse, refuse to allow anybody or anything, including yourself, to change that fact that you refuse to feel fear. You refuse to allow fear or being scared or any of those similar emotions and feelings to enter your front door. You don't allow those feelings inside your home ever, ever, full stop, never. And that's as important as someone that you care about hitting you. They do it once, they're gone. They never, ever do it again. Not because they say, oh, I love you. I'll never do it again. Promise. No, they'll never do it again because they're never going to be near you again. 
That's why never again. No. That powerful. Because you deserve to be able to sleep. I mean, come on. Sleeping is one of the most important things in our lives. It's not just something that we can enjoy doing. It's something that we need to do for our own well-being and health. And I wonder how it feels as you've got in touch with this never feeling, this no, this won't happen. And you can tell by the voice, this is real. I'm not messing about here. I'm not being fluffy wuffy like a little puppy. This is real. I ain't no jokes here. This is real. This is serious. You do not allow yourself to be scared in your own bed. Nothing and no one can make you feel that. Unless you allow it. And you refuse to allow that. Refuse with every ounce of energy in your body and your mind. Every particle of your existence refuses to be scared in your own bed. It's a place of safety. It's a place of peacefulness. A place of healing. Just as your home. Your living room, your kitchen, your bathroom. The storage room, the radiators. The knives and forks, the fridge, everything. It's all part of that safety. It's all part of that calm. Because you deserve this. This is yours. This is your space. This is your life. I'm now turning to a game show host now. This is your life. And now that you've decided that you refuse to allow other people or other things to get in the way of your peacefulness, your relaxation, your happiness. Things change. You feel different. And then you notice that even though we've talked about leaving that stuff, those worries and, you know, anxieties at the front door, you notice that when you open your front door, they're not there. You notice that when you walk through the street, maybe on the way to the supermarket, on the way to work, wherever it is you're going, those worries and stresses and anxieties, they're not there. 
and you go about your life and you're doing things and wherever you are you notice that those stresses and anxieties that you used to experience that they're, they're not there they're not there now And you realize that actually that peacefulness, that safety that you feel now when you're lying in bed, that healing and that safety that you feel when you're in the bathroom or the kitchen or in your home is the same as that feeling of safety that you can feel wherever you are because that safety comes from within you it doesn't come from outside it comes from within you feeling safe feeling comfortable feeling positive feeling confident comes from within you So wherever you go, you have those feelings of safety, calmness, confidence. All is healing. All is growing as a person with the ability to enjoy this newfounded safety and positive attitude that you have, this new attitude that you have embedded into your mind that is now there, stuck with super glue. This new attitude that you can feel happy because not only do you have the right to feel happy and safe and relaxed and confident wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you have made that decision to feel happier safer, more relaxed and confident wherever you are, whatever you're doing. You've decided that. You have decided that. And those feelings of safety, confidence and self-love come from within you. And those feelings are constantly growing within you. So that safety is becoming stronger. That confidence is becoming stronger. Self-belief, self-love becoming stronger. That determination to enjoy your life and to re be reminded that you are your own best friend. And that you can pretty much do whatever you choose to do. Because you're an amazing person. Which brings me to the end of this recording. So. I hope. It's been useful. My suggestion is that you listen to it a few times. I'm laughing because, you know, it's quite a long recording and I feel like I was almost shouting, you will feel relaxed. <laughs> but you've taken this on board. This is sunk so deep into your unconscious mind and everything I said was positive it's all about 
caring for yourself. Being kind. Ultimately, it's about being kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Don't you? You do. Why not? Why shouldn't you be happy? What benefit is there for you to be miserable? Honestly, answer me that question. What benefit, what possible benefit to you and your life is there for you to be miserable? What are you gaining from that? Nothing is the answer. Nothing. Besides, because your attitude has changed really strongly changed feeling relaxed and calm and happy is part of that change to experience more of that happiness you don't have to be doing anything to feel happy it's an emotion it's an emotion it's like I don't know what it's like to go to the toilet for a woman but when I go to the toilet uh if I do a wee, it feels nice. It does. I don't have to do anything for that feeling. It feels nice. It's a nice little feeling. It's not. I don't get hugely excited about it. I'm not going to be writing poems about it either. You know, but it feels quite nice. It's just a natural feeling. And I realise now you could say, so you're saying happiness is like going to the toilet. No. But in a way, yes, because it's natural. Feeling happy is a natural thing. It just feels nice. Feeling happy that you're feeling relaxed. Feeling happy that you've made a decision to change things so that you can feel more relaxed and safe not safer but safe when you're lying down on your bed in fact wherever you are you can feel safe protected Feeling safe because you decided to feel safe now. This is the end of the recording. Thank you for listening. Speak to you next time. Bye.